Before we get into that, let's cross to the US where the Democrats are having a reality check of their own. You see, the radical open border policies they championed are having an impact, not just on the border towns where millions of illegal immigrants have flooded in since the Biden administration came to power, but now the impact is being felt in places like New York City, where Mayor Eric Adams used to say things like this. You pledged uh, during your campaign to uh, keep New York City a sanctuary a city. Are, do you have any concern that that, that policy uh, is, 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 for, is attracting more people to the border, more people to cross the border to make that dangerous no. trip? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, the city has always been a sanctuary city, and we've always managed those who wanted to come to uh, New York City to pursue the American dream. Sanctuary City, all those feel-good platitudes and virtue signaling. But when faced with the reality of the policies he championed, this is what Eric Adams sounds like today. I don't see an end to this. This issue will destroy New York City. Destroy New York City. We're getting 10,000 migrants a month. One time we were just getting Venezuela, now we're getting Ecuador, now we're getting Russian speaking coming through Mexico, now we're getting um, Western Africa, now we're getting people from all over the globe have made their minds up that they're going to come through the southern part of the border and come into New York City. And everyone is saying it's New York City's problem. Every community in this city is going to be impacted. We had a 12 billion dollar deficit that we're going to have to cut every service in this city. Oh dear, may talk about a reality check, but still the dim-witted left cannot acknowledge something that even children learn eventually, that actions have consequences. You implement dumb policies, you get catastrophic consequences. And talking about dim-witted lefties, let's check in with how the ladies of The View, filmed in New York City, are coping with the small influx of illegal migrants, small when compared to what states like Texas and Arizona have been dealing with. It puts tremendous stress on, on, on a city, on a community, on the social services. They need to be resettled elsewhere. That they need, right? to, they need to be out. We're this spread, a massive yeah. country. Well, and it's only going to get worse with global warming and climate change because people can't live in certain parts of this world. <laughs> 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 it's climate change, only going to get worse. But what is the Biden administration, which has overseen record numbers crossing that southern border illegally, millions every year, what are they going to do? Well, this is their latest genius idea. No, they're not going to complete the war. They're not going to implement tough border protection policies. They're going to try to keep the illegal migrants in Texas. The LA Times reports the Biden White House is considering a plan to force illegal immigrants to remain in Texas while awaiting asylum screenings. Genius, genius. Why should Texans have to deal with this crisis? They aren't the ones voting for sanctuary city mayors and governors. Now, before we bring in Alex Antic, I just want to talk about The Voice a little bit. All through the week, I've been playing new clips from the biggest voice advocates those who played a critical role in the formation of the Uluru Statement and how, over the years, they have been very outspoken about their plans, their plans for a treaty, for truth-telling commissions, reparations. That's the agenda. That's what The Voice is meant to usher in. And here is further proof of that agenda. Let's hear from the architect of the Uluru Statement, Professor Megan Davis, in 2021, explaining that at its heart, at its core... The Uluru Statement is about treaty. At the core of Uluru is treaty. This is what Uluru called for. Makarata is the culmination of our agenda. We seek a Makarata Commission to supervise the process of agreement making between governments and First Nations and truth telling about our history. Let me repeat myself, at the core of the Uluru Statement is treaty. But Professor, if treaty is at the core of the Uluru Statement, then why are we starting with a voice? Well, the Yes campaigners have also been expansive in explaining their strategy of why they need a constitutionally enshrined body 
so that they can negotiate a treaty from a position of power. It means that it will compel the Commonwealth to have us at the table on any laws or policies that are made about our lives, and that is what the force of law can do in the Constitution. It compels the government, the parliament, to have us at the table. If it's in legislation, as the Wyatt process says, it can only oblige, it cannot compel. Cannot compel. And she also explained why state-based treaties are not enough because the states don't have the money needed. Perhaps the most salient issue concerning state-based treaty making is their quality. Will they amount to anything more than service delivery agreements? Without the fiscal dominance and capacity of the Commonwealth Government, what can these state and territory governments really commit to in terms of the financial resources that are required to underwrite treaty commitments. Financial resources mm. required to underwrite treaty commitments. It ain't going to be cheap, folks. Here is Professor Davis in 2018 explaining that treaties are not the end. They're the beginning, and yes, they're about reparations. But treaties are about reparations for past injustice, and they are about land, and they are about resources. Now let's hear from Marsha Langton quickly, a key architect of The Voice to Parliament, explaining in 2020 why The Voice is needed to enable and empower the treaty process. So, in fact, constitutional recognition would entrench treaties if we get the framing of it right. Mm. Treaties without constitutional recognition would be highly vulnerable and fragile to political whim. Now the Prime Minister, who has repeatedly pledged to deliver the Uluru Statement in full, pretends it's some sort of a conspiracy theory to even discuss treaties, as if he's never discussed it. But Anthony Albanese wrote in April 2021, Labor is committed to the statement from the heart in full voice treaty truth. The Prime Minister will like you to memory hole this from August 2021 when he wrote... We need a government that will deliver the Uluru Statement in full voice, treaty and truth because a nation not yet reconciled isn't truly whole. There you go. The man who now leads this great country doesn't see it as truly whole until we have a treaty in place to facilitate reconciliation. Albo now pretends the voice is just about recognition, a benign statement in the Constitution with no real power. If you fall for that, then you'll fall for anything.